and kiss our play. The Milky Christmas decorations. It was Christmas time on the island of Sodor. Lights and decorations were going up everywhere. Oh, the indignity. Passengers were carrying presents to give to their friends and family. And there was even a Christmas tree at Tidmouth Sheds. Well, who put the tree in the middle of the track? The Diesel Works had a few decorations too. Diesel 10 wasn't very happy. The Steamies have a lot more decorations than we do. I went to Tidmouth Sheds and they had loads of decorations. What about me? I'm a decoration. No, you're not. You're a Diesel. Never mind about Sydney. We need some more decorations. And I know just where to get them. Paxton, come with me. But Sir Topham had asked me to. Never mind that. Come with me. That night, when Thomas and his friends came back to Tidmouth Sheds, they were very surprised. Where's our Christmas tree? I don't know. Maybe it's invisible. Maybe it got knocked over. Well, who would knock over a Christmas tree? Maybe it was stolen. But who would steal someone else's Christmas tree? Meanwhile, at the Diesel Works... Oh, uh, the tree's fallen over again. Maybe you should prop it up against something. There. Our very own Christmas tree. What we need now is some lights and a big decoration for the top of the tree. Don't forget about me. I'm hanging over the Christmas tree. Yes, Sydney. You look great up there. Paxton, come with me. That night, when Thomas and his friends came back to Tidmouth Sheds, they had another surprise. Oh dear, where are all our lights? Maybe it's invisible. This is outrageous. Someone is taking all our decorations. But who could take someone else's Christmas lights? I thought you were gonna put the lights on the Christmas tree. You can be our decoration, Sydney. Since you're hanging around up there, waiting for your wheels. Well, we do need to put something on the tree. I know where we can get some garland. Eh, Paxton? Um, no, Diesel 10. <laughs> I have to go collect that flatbed for Sir Topham Hat. The next day, while the steamies were out working, Diesel 10 came sneaking into Tidmouth Sheds. But he didn't notice that Percy was watching him. Gotcha! Diesel 10! I didn't see you there! This is the worst thing you've ever done, Diesel 10! <laughs> really? I caused Lady to crash, then I tried to destroy her and Mr. Conductor, and after that, I took over the steamworks. But you think stealing garland is the worst thing I've ever done. Put that back right now. Make me. Out of my way, silly steamy. Come on, oh. let's go. Catch me if you can! Come on, Thomas! Okay, Percy. Come on, Emily! You got it, Percy! Soon, the whole steam team was after Diesel 10. Diesel 10 led them right to the Diesel Works. 
Hold it right there, Diesel 10. That's our Christmas tree. And those are our lights. And that's our garland, too. He's on to us, boss. Get them. <laughs> Fellas. <laughs> Fellas. Hey, fellas! Look at what Sir Topham had sent us. You have your own Christmas decorations, Diesel 10. We want ours back. Oh, very well. So the Steamies left with their Christmas decorations. Except for Percy. Sydney, how long have you been up there? Uh, I'm not too sure, Percy. About two years. <laughs> two years? That's a very long time. Yeah. I've been waiting on me wheels. I think they misplaced the order. Then, Percy got an idea. Later on, on his way back to Tidmouth Sheds, Percy stopped by Napford Station to talk with Sir Topham Hatt. Thomas and his friends were very happy to have the decorations back. Oh no, not those diesels again. It's okay. Is that Sydney? Yes, Gordon, it's me. Thank you, Percy, for giving me the best present ever. My new wheels. <laughs> you gave a present to a diesel? Why didn't you give the rest of us anything? Christmas is about being kind to one another. That's why the rest of the Diesel sent me to give you these. <laughs> wow, Sydney, what are they? They're special holiday candles. Well, how will we light a candle? We'll light them with my Christmas lights. Hey, those candles make a neat sound. the indignity. The Phantom Express. Percy was getting ready to pull his mail cars. He was excited. Hi James. I'm making my first ever delivery to Alstead Castle. James decided to have some fun with Percy. That sounds scary to me. The Phantom Express might get you. Phantom Express? Who's that? He's a ghost engine. He puffs around Alstead Castle, rattling the rails and blowing his ghostly whistle. Don't listen to him, Percy. He's just teasing you. There is no such thing as ghosts. Yes, there is. You'll see, Percy. Percy was nervous for ghosts, but he collected the mail and off he chuffed to Alstead Castle. When he arrived at the castle, Percy was scared. I hope I don't meet the Phantom Express. Percy had to wait at the red signal for the castle drawbridge to come down. Percy's driver was unloading the mail, but Percy was still scared of the Phantom Express. Who, who, who's there? Hi, Percy. Ghost train. No, 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 no. No, Percy, it's me, the rocket. Oh, hi, Steven. I thought you were the Phantom Express. The Phantom Express? What's that? He's a ghost engine. He lives at the castle. He rattles the rails and blows his ghostly horn. Oh, there's no such thing as ghosts, Percy. I've never seen one or heard any rattling rails. Just then, James arrived. He was delivering coal for the castle's big bonfire. 
Have you seen the Phantom Express yet, Percy? I don't believe your story, James. Steven says there's no such thing as ghosts. This made James very cross. Well, I just saw the Phantom Express. Really? Were those rails rattling? We don't believe you, James. What's that noise then? Well, that's an owl. <laughs> well, what about that noise? Well, that's a monkey, James. Well, what about that one? That sounded just like the ghostly whistle of the Phantom Express. Actually, that was just my boiler. I think I've been using Henry's coal by mistake. Let's meet up again, Percy, right after we finished our jobs. Good idea, Stephen. So Stephen and Percy continued about their chores. But James decided to play tricks on them. James blew his whistle through some pipes. When Stephen heard the noise, he was scared. What's that noise? It sounds like the ghost train. Stephen got scared. He backed up so fast, Stephen didn't watch where he was going. Stephen had fallen right into the moat. Now I wonder what happened to that drawbridge. Meanwhile, Percy was on his way to meet Stephen. But Stephen wasn't at the junction. I wonder where Stephen is. I hope the Phantom didn't get him. So Percy puffed on. But when James saw Percy, James blew through the pipes again. What's that noise? It must be the Phantom Train. So Percy puffed his hardest. Then there was trouble. Hello, Percy. I see you found the meeting place. James wanted to tell Percy and Stephen it was all a joke. But he couldn't find them anywhere. As he puffed around the castle grounds alone, he began to get scared. As James approached the castle drawbridge, the drawbridge slowly lowered down, and the Phantom Express appeared. <laughs> ah, the Phantom Express! Did James say Phantom Express? Puff, James, puff! Ah, it knows my name! And James puffed away as fast as his wheels would take him. He puffed as fast as he could to Tidmouth Halt, where Sir Topham Hatt was waiting. Sir Topham Hatt was curious. James told Sir Topham Hatt everything about the Phantom Express. All right, James, let's go on a ghost hunt. So off James went to Ulstead Castle with Sir Topham Hatt on board. When they got to Ulfstead Castle, Sir Topham Hatt got out and ordered for the drawbridge to be lowered. You see, James? There's no such thing as ghost trains. A ghost train! I knew they were real. Just then, a big gust of wind blew the sheet off the ghost train. <laughs> Sydney, Merry Christmas, everyone. This is a Halloween video. Sydney, why were you pretending to be the Phantom Express? <laughs> oh, I forgot. Have you seen my bed sheet? The Smelly Kipper. One night, James was telling scary stories at Tidmouth Sheds. And then, the ghost train rattled over the bridge, waking up everyone with its spooky whistle. Most of the engines don't take James's stories too seriously, but Percy found the stories very scary. Especially because Percy often pulled the mail train at night. Sometimes at night, things look scarier than they really are. A shark! Oh, it's a
It's only a dolphin. Ah, a tiger! <laughs> oh, it was only a goat. <laughs> Percy, I have a special for you. Ah, a monster! You must deliver Flynn's hose to the Sonor Search and Rescue Center. It is a monster! Ah! And that's when I saw the ghost train. <gasps> James, Percy doesn't like your stories. Well, it's not my fault Percy's not as brave as I am. Well, if you're so brave, why don't you go out at night and pull the mail train? Pulling the mail train is a job for a small engine like Percy, not a splendid tender engine like me. It's all right, Thomas. I don't mind pulling the mail train. If you're really not afraid, James, perhaps you'd like to prove it tonight by pulling the flying kipper for me. All right, Henry, I shall. I'm not afraid of a few fish. We'll see, James. We'll see. James made his way to the docks to collect the flying kipper, loaded with a fresh shipment of fish. But as he got closer, he began to notice a funny smell. Oh my! What's that horrible smell? <laughs> he must mean you, Whiff. I just had a bath three months ago. That smell is the fish, of course, James. Are you here to collect the flying kipper? Um, no. Henry pulls the flying kipper. Oh, then why are you here? Um, plot hole. So James headed back to Titmus Shed's. Wake up, Henry. You need to pull the smelly kipper. You're late. But I thought you were pulling the flying kipper tonight. Don't be silly, Henry. Pulling the flying kipper is your job. But you said you would pull it to show how brave you are. You must have been having a dream, Henry. Good night. Oh no. I better hurry. James had thought he'd been very clever. Henry hurried as fast as he could while he pulled the flying kipper. But every delivery of fish was late. We weren't done unloading that. And sometimes very late indeed. I'm late! My forklift! When Henry returned to Tidmus Sheds in the morning, Sir Topham Hatt was waiting. Why was the flying kipper so late last night, Henry? There was no fish for my breakfast. How could I eat fish and eggs without fish? I dreamt James said he would pull the flying kipper for me. That wasn't a dream, Henry. I heard James tell you that. I heard him too. James didn't feel so clever now. James, is this true? Did you cause confusion and delay? I'm sorry, Sir Topham Hat. I went to collect the trucks, but they were very smelly. Well, of course the fish are smelly. But you told Henry you would pull the train. You will pull the flying kipper tonight to make up for your broken promise. That night, as James approached the docks, he smelled something terrible. What are you looking at? James was very careful backing up to the troublesome trucks. Careful, careful. I don't want any fish on me. 
The troublesome trucks thought this was very funny indeed. James is scared of smelly fish. James is scared of smelly fish. Stop saying that. I am not. Then there was trouble. James was so distracted. He wasn't watching where he was going. James was covered in fish. James was very quiet. Then the troublesome trucks started to laugh. <laughs> Porter started to laugh too. And so did Cranky. And the boats in the water started laughing too. Then James spoke. You're laughing at me. You're all laughing at me. I'll give you something to laugh about. You're supposed to take the fish in the truck, James. <laughs> then there was trouble. There's something fishy about James. James scoured the island looking for more trains that were laughing at him. Percy was pulling the mail cars. That camper was sure flying. Thomas was waiting for Tidmouth Tipping Bridge. At least I'm not stuck down the mine. Henry was just chuffing along, minding his own business. I wonder if this is a dream too. Gordon was being unloaded by a crane. I was not done unloading that crane. Oh, Henrietta! I wonder what got into James? Eventually, James ran out of steam. Then Sir Topham had arrived. James! Why did you cause all this confusion and delay? They were all laughing at me, Sir Topham Hat, because I'm covered in fish. Why didn't you just go to the washdown? <laughs> That's a good question. Honestly, James. One morning, Harold was rescuing some climbers near Rolf's castle. Thank you, Harold. Uh, no problem, Spider-Man. I'm scared of heights. Here, I'll put you down now. Why'd you put me in the water? You're welcome, Spider-Man. Spider-Sense tingling. How you doing, Spider-Man? We're your biggest fans. On his way back to the Sodor Search and Rescue Center, something strange happened. Ah! My rotor's jammed! So, Duck was called to help with the rescue. Ah, Duck! You are to take Harold to the Sodor Search and Rescue Center to be repaired. But sir, I'm too tall and my floats are too wide. Uh, I don't want to bash into things. You're right. You'd better take him to the smelter's yard instead. Yes, sir. Wait, Sir Topham Hat. Why don't I act as Duck's back engine? To make sure Harold fits through any bridges or tunnels. Hmm. Okay. Now don't you worry, Harold. Thomas will make sure you don't crash into anything. We crashed. Sorry, I wasn't paying attention. And what about me? It's the scrapyard for you. And whatever it is you're pulling. As they were traveling along, an idea flew into Thomas's funnel. Duck, I know how we can make Harold feel better. We can show him all the sights of Sodor from the ground. Well, that's a great idea, Thomas. But Duck wasn't so keen. There's only two ways to do things, Thomas. The great western way and the wrong way. 
We must get to the Sodor Search and Rescue Center without any dilly dally. And without any fun. Narrow bridge ahead, Thomas. I see it, Doc. We might not make it, Doc. Maybe we could go to the animal park, Harold. You could see all the animals up close. Wow, that sounds like a lot of fun, Thomas. Sorry, Harold. The animal park is not on our way. How about we go across the Sodor Suspension Bridge? Oh, I'd love that, Thomas. Whoa. No, Thomas. We need to get to the Sodor Search and Rescue Center. It's the Great Western Way. Doug was sticking to the Great Western Way. And that was that. This made Thomas cross. Harold, I really want to show you Napford Station. But I don't think Duck will let me. Then, Thomas had another idea. Duck, I forgot to tell you. We need to go to Napford Station. We have to collect the engineer who's going to fix Harold. Okay, Thomas. I believe you. You'd never lie to me. So Duck headed directly to Napford Station. We'll be there in no time, Thomas. Soon, they were at Napford Station. Wow! Just look at that! Duck! Look out! Well, what's the matter? <laughs> Harold's too wide to fit into Napford. Express coming through! Hmm, there seems to be a helicopter on the line. Sir Topham Hatt couldn't believe his eyes. Duck, Thomas, what are you doing here? We're here to pick up the engineer to fix Harold. Oh. Very well, carry on. Wait, sir. I just dropped the engineer off at the Sodor Search and Rescue Center. Thomas, you told me it was our job to pick him up. Um, sorry, Duck. Duck was cross with Thomas. You tricked me, Thomas. But from now on, we'll be doing things the great western way. Thomas looked up ahead. He could see they were approaching a tunnel. He knew Harold's rotors were too wide to fit through. Stop, Duck. We need to go the other way. Oh no, Thomas. I'm not falling for that again. But, Duck, look out! <laughs> Harold's blades were wedged inside the tunnel. They knew they couldn't move him without help. Soon, Sir Topham had arrived. He was very cross. I missed my mid-afternoon lunch for this. Duck, you and Thomas have caused confusion and delay. Twice in one day. Smelter's yard for everybody. Wait, sir. We've learned our lesson. Haven't we, Thomas? Yes, sir. And we're ready to make amends. That's right, sir. Very well. Soon, with the help of the workers, Harold was free again. I'm sorry, Thomas. I should have listened to you. And I shouldn't have tricked you in the first place, Duck. But how do we get to the Sodor Search and Rescue Center without any tunnels or bridges? I know. We'll take the Thomas way. What's the Thomas way? Let me go in front and I'll show you. So the two engines switched places. Ready, Duck? Ready, Thomas. Okay. Let's go. You're back. Uh, 
Soon, they arrived at the Sodor Search and Rescue Center. Ah, uh, we arrived safe and sound. Well, thank you, Thomas. Thank you, Duck. I hope I never ride the rails ever again. On their way home, Duck and Thomas talked. You know, Thomas, I think there's three ways of doing things. The Great Western Way, the Wrong Way, and the Kids Toys Play Way. And the Kids Toys Play Way is dangerous. You can say that again.